ever find yourself reminiscing about the good old days, wondering what life was like before the digital revolution? Well, today, we'll explore the top 20 things baby boomers took for granted, things that are practically extinct now. Stick around to the end, because you won't believe how much things have changed. Number 20. Drive-in theaters Starting our journey into the past was something that was more than just a movie night. It was really something special. Baby boomers, remember those glorious nights at the drive-in theaters? You can see the cars lined up, blankets in tow, and the smell of buttery popcorn wafting through the air. For boomers, this was the epitome of entertainment. Imagine watching a movie from the comfort of your car, under the open sky, surrounded by other moviegoers doing the exact same thing. It was like a massive outdoor living room, but with a giant screen instead of a TV. Millennials and Gen Z, wrap your heads around this. It was the original Netflix and chill. The communal atmosphere was electric. Couples would cozy up, and families would create their little nests, ready for a cinematic adventure. Now I know, for the younger generations used to streaming services and multiplex cinemas, this might sound like ancient history, but trust me, there was something magical about the big screen under the stars. Do you recall watching classics like The Pink Panther or the original Parent Trap from the comfort of your car? That's a level of nostalgia only boomers can truly appreciate. So next time you fire up your favorite streaming app, take a moment to salute the drive-in theaters, the OGs of movie nights. Stay tuned because we've got 19 more gems of the past coming your way. Number 19. Physical photo albums. Now let's dive into a piece of nostalgia that's a bit more tangible. Physical photo albums. Ah, the days when memories were crafted into thick, decorated volumes rather than swiped through on a screen. In the era of smartphones and social media, Boomers hold dear those precious physical photo albums. Imagine this, flipping through the pages, each one telling a story of family vacations, birthdays, and other significant events. While millennials and Gen Z can effortlessly scroll through digital galleries on their devices, boomers have a special place in their hearts for the tactile joy of physical photo albums. In the closets and attics of this era lie boxes of movie reels, slides, audio tapes, and collections of prints dating back to the 1800s. Family and ancestors are preserved in albums and scrapbooks, carefully arranged with pockets or sticky magnetic sheets. It's like a time capsule, filled with not just photos, but newspaper clippings, war mementos, and other cherished memorabilia. Sure, boomers have adapted to the digital age. They share photos via email or text, appreciate the original prints, and might have a few in frames, collages, or albums. But here's the thing. They might have smartphones, but they're not entirely comfortable with all the digital wizardry. When it comes to photo editing or storage, they might need a helping hand. Cloud storage? Well, let's just say they're still getting the hang of it. And many prefer the trusty external hard drive. What made these physical albums so special? It was an art form, my friends. After getting photos developed, the real fun began. Choosing the favorites for album inclusion, mounting prints on thick black pages with those tiny adhesive corners, adding captions below in colored marker, a meticulous process that showcased not just the memories but creativity. For significant events like weddings or family vacations, giant photo albums became communal treasures, sitting proudly on the coffee table for guests to peruse. Today, digital photo albums might be more convenient for organization, but they lack the tangible, crafted feel of those old-school photo albums. The time and thought put into selecting and arranging prints made these albums meaningful. Do you remember the joy of sitting with family and friends, flipping through albums, allowing the photos to rekindle memories and spark discussions? I have a personal memory tied to this. Crafting an album of my 50 favorite pictures before heading off to college. Soft all over. Charlie Chan mustache. Well dressed. Those framed photos around my new room made it feel like a piece of home. It was a ritual of care and love. Something the digital age might find hard to replicate. Number 18. Traditional bookstores. I miss those good old traditional bookstores. Those havens of knowledge and adventure that baby boomers cherish so dearly. Join me as we take a leisurely stroll down memory lane and explore the fading charm of brick and mortar bookshops. For boomers, these places weren't just spots to snag a book, they were sanctuaries of exploration. Imagine leisurely wandering through the aisles, running your fingers along the spines, feeling the satisfying weight of a book, and inhaling that distinct scent of printed paper. It's an experience that transcends reading, it's a sensory journey. Back then, physical books weren't just vessels of knowledge but companions in solitude. Boomers would lose themselves for hours in the pages, turning each one with anticipation, wholly absorbed in the worlds crafted by words. The bookstore wasn't merely a place, it was a refuge, a haven for discovery. Fast forward to today, where the reading landscape has undergone a seismic shift. 
ebooks, online retailers, and digital libraries offer millennials and Gen Z a universe of reading material at their fingertips. While the convenience is undeniable, there's a unique charm to strolling through the aisles of a physical bookstore. In this era dominated by technology, brick and mortar stores face an uphill battle. Online book behemoths provide unparalleled convenience and a cost-effective model that physical stores struggle to match. However, and it's a significant however, there's something these online giants lack, a sense of community. Traditional bookstores were more than just transactional spaces. They were hubs for book clubs, author signings, and chance encounters with fellow book enthusiasts. The aroma of coffee intermingling with the scent of paper, the creaking wooden floors, and the soft rustling of pages created an atmosphere beyond the mere act of buying. It was about a shared love for literature, recommendations from friendly booksellers, and the joy of stumbling upon hidden gems. Sure, ebooks and online bookstores have their perks bookmarking, annotating, customizable fonts, and personalized reading experiences. Audiobooks offer a convenient way to consume stories on the go. Yet, as we say goodbye to traditional bookstores, let us not forget the intangible magic they brought to the world of reading. Number 17. Newspaper Classifieds Let's go back in time and explore the legacy of information exchange cherished by boomers. Newspaper Classifieds Picture this. A Sunday morning, flipping through the pages of a newspaper, eyes scanning the classified section for a plethora of treasures. Before the internet's omnipresence, this was the go-to hub for boomers seeking job openings, apartments, or second-hand goods. Unlike the swift and convenient online platforms adored by millennials and Gen Z, boomers reveled in the tactile process of flipping through pages, circling potential opportunities with pens in hand. They used to call classified advertising the rivers of gold, transforming regional newspapers into profitable and highly desirable businesses. But alas, the rivers of gold are no longer flowing. Today, the concern is more about classifieds being an endangered species, as the industry faces its deepest recession in generations. Enter Craigslist, the internet's free classifieds page, often blamed for playing a substantial role in the decline of the newspaper industry. In its heyday of classifieds, newspapers were thriving. However, the rise of Craigslist from 2000 to 2007 changed the game entirely. Professors analyzing the impact found that classified ad buyers saved a whopping $5 billion by opting for free listings on Craigslist instead of investing in newspaper ads. Now think about it. That $5 billion saved by consumers was a direct hit to newspapers, leading to the decimation of their classifieds ad business. One of the three long-standing revenue pillars, alongside circulation revenue and more traditional ads. Number 16 roller skating rinks. All right, let's glide into the next disappearing gem, roller skating rinks. For baby boomers, these rinks were the epitome of cool, the disco clubs for the underage. Picture this, laced up in high top skates, grooving to the tunes of ABBA, and the only swiping right was to dodge crashing into your crush. Now let's roll back the clock to 1863, when Massachusetts native James Plimpton revolutionized skating with the invention of the four-wheel quad skate. These skates featured two pairs of side-by-side -side wheels and a nifty cushion and pivoting mechanism, allowing skaters to steer by simply leaning to the sides. Before Plimpton's genius, skates were inline designs. And remember those childhood memories of attaching metal skates to shoes and tightening them with a key? Ah, the simpler times. But the real thrill awaited at the rinks, where boomers traded in those clunky metal skates for more advanced quad skates with shoe-type laces. For over a century, the quad skate reigned supreme until rollerblades stole the spotlight. But alas, roller skating's glory years faded as boomers grew up and traded skates for baby strollers. It saw a resurgence with their kids coming of age, but the next generation found themselves swayed by newer distractions like malls, video games, and mega movie complexes. Number 15, using encyclopedias for research. Okay, let's talk about what we're losing, the encyclopedia. Back in the day, before Google Who, writing a school report was an adventure that meant hours in the library for baby boomers, flipping through stacks of encyclopedias like prose. They were the masters of the Dewey Decimal System. This man is an author. He writes stories. Navigating through rows of books like seasoned explorers. Can you imagine relying on encyclopedias instead of Google? Boomers sure can. These hefty tomes were their analog ancestors to today's search engines. Forget typing in a search bar. They dove headfirst into substantial volumes of knowledge, each page a gateway to a world of information. But let's go back a little bit. Before the internet and smartphones made answers instantly accessible, people had to work for their knowledge. 
A set of encyclopedias was probably sold to the family by a door-to-door -door salesman. Now there's a relic of the past. For boomers, encyclopedias weren't just books, they were portals to discovery. Each volume held the promise of adventure, and every page turned was a step closer to enlightenment. Researching meant diving into the depths of printed pages, taking notes, and cross-referencing topics like true scholars. But here's the surprising part. Boomers actually enjoyed the process. The quest for knowledge wasn't just about finding answers. It was about the journey itself. Patience played a vital role, and the thrill of uncovering new information was unmatched. So while Gen Z might struggle to appreciate the effort required to find answers in a world without search engines, let's take a moment to salute the encyclopedias, a great research tool. Number 14. Writing letters and waiting for the postal mail. Letter writing has been lost for a long time. Let's dive into the world where instant messaging wasn't the name of the game. Baby boomers knew the thrill of receiving a handwritten letter, the ink smudged, the paper carrying a faint scent of the sender. Imagine a time when instant gratification wasn't the style. Waiting for the postal mail was an experience, and a handwritten letter was a treasure. A place of someone's heart crafted on paper. Boomers reveled in sending and receiving these tangible tokens of connection, a far cry from today's rapid-fire digital exchanges. Now what has happened to letter writing today? In an era of texting, messaging, and WhatsApp, the beautiful art of letter writing seems to have faded into the background. Life was simpler, and some would say more beautiful. Letters weren't just words on paper, they were feelings reciprocated. Once upon a time, dear so-and-so was the norm, replaced today with a quick, are you busy? The evolution from letter writing to instant messaging mirrors the speed of life today. From handwritten notes to text laden with emojis and smileys, we're so occupied with our busyness today that the art of verbal communication itself has taken a hit. The quality of our expressions has transformed into quick messages, often misunderstood in the sea of emojis. A single text can sometimes carry the weight to end a relationship, and messages that were once handwritten, cherished, and preserved are now just occupying space on our phones, waiting to be deleted. The beautiful art of letter writing, expressing oneself through handwritten pages, now lies hidden beneath the digital noise of text messages and WhatsApp forwards. It's a shift that some might argue has driven us apart. So let's take a moment to remember the joy of waiting for that letter and the anticipation that came with every mail delivery. Number 13. Listening to music on vinyl records. I want to tell you about this game, Shock Attack. You try to get your little... Let's rewind to the golden era of music before Spotify and iTunes took the stage. The age of vinyl records. Baby boomers had a unique relationship with their music. It wasn't just about the tunes, but the experience of flipping through stacks of vinyl records, searching for that perfect album to play on their turntables. It's hard to imagine that long before the ease of music streaming, boomers were immersed in the tactile ritual of vinyl records. The process of hunting for rare albums, discovering hidden gems, and the joy of finding that elusive B-side track was a treasure hunt worth every minute. It's a sentiment that might seem time-consuming to younger generations accustomed to instant gratification. Vinyl records occupy a special place in the hearts of boomers, standing strong even in the digital age. They cherish the warm sound quality that vinyl offers and the ritual of carefully placing the needle on the record to immerse themselves in their favorite tunes. While streaming services provide instant access to millions of songs, boomers find joy in the physicality and nostalgia associated with their vinyl record collections. For boomers, vinyl records hold a distinct allure that's hard to resist. In an age dominated by digital music, they argue that vinyl's unmistakable crackle and pop offer a more genuine and authentic sound experience. This potent mix of nostalgia and a steadfast belief in superior sound quality turns boomers into devoted custodians of this vintage musical treasure. The resurgence of vinyl records is a testament to the enduring charm of this analog format. While boomers continue to revel in the warmth of vinyl, younger generations may lean towards the convenience and portability of digital music streaming. Number 12. Buying a new album instead of just one song Let's go back to the days when buying music was more than just a click for a single song. It was a commitment to an entire album. No playlists, no skipping tracks. It was about embracing the artist's complete musical expression. Back then, creating an album was an art form for many musicians. It wasn't just a collection of songs, but a profound statement of their voice, capturing their current state of mind and reflecting the world around them. Albums were a recorded experience, a journey that unfolded across multiple tracks. But fast forward to today, and the landscape of musical consumption has dramatically shifted. In today's singles-dominated world, the art of sitting down to absorb an entire album from start to finish has become a rarity. Portable music and streaming services like Spotify and Apple Music offer the freedom to curate personal playlists, eliminating the need to be tied down to a full-length album. 
the very essence of the album, once considered the pinnacle of artistic expression, is now facing the risk of becoming a relic. The numbers tell a story. Album sales have witnessed a significant decline, down 17.7% last year alone. In 1999, the CD era saw a whopping 939.9 .9 million copies sold. Today, the trend leans towards singles, mirroring the early days of the music business where artists needed hit singles before even being considered for an album. While the singles era comes with its perks and immediate gratification, it poses a question for artists. Is creating an album worth the months of effort and financial investment? The musical industry seems to be reinventing. The musical industry seems to be revisiting its roots, where artists in the 50s and 60s needed hit singles before venturing into album territory. Even legendary acts like the Beatles and Elton John, despite the pressure for consistent song quality, managed to deliver timeless albums that are still cherished today. Number 11. Polaroid Cameras We'll go back to a time when selfies were unheard of, and baby boomers had their hands on something truly magical, Polaroid Cameras. Those instant wonders that turned moments into tangible memories within minutes. Back in the day, before the digital era and the term selfies even existed, capturing a photograph meant a patient wait. Films had to go through an intricate process, capturing on film, finishing the roll, extracting the film carefully, darkroom development, and the agonizing wait for the photos to dry. It was a ritual, a process that demanded time and dedication. Enter the Game Changer, the Polaroid Instant Camera, born in 1948. Revolutionary doesn't even cover it. Imagine snapping a photo and seeing it right there instantly. No waiting, no processing, just immediate gratification. This was a photographic revelation that stood unchallenged for decades until the digital camera era dawned almost 50 years later. Polaroid cameras became an icon, etching themselves into the memories of baby boomers. In 1991, they seemed at their peak, a symbol of capturing moments spontaneously. However, shockingly, just a decade later in 2001, Polaroid filed for bankruptcy. The rapid advancements in digital technology, digital cameras, and video cameras left Polaroid struggling to keep up. While they once transformed how we capture memories, Polaroid found itself on the wrong side of technological evolution. Attempts with video cassettes, camcorders, digital cameras, 35mm photography, and scanners couldn't save them. A company that once redefined instant photography became a casualty of the very speed it had introduced to the world. Number 10. Waiting for Saturday Morning Cartoons Have you forgotten when Saturday mornings were the holy grail of animated bliss? For baby boomers, it was more than just a cartoon marathon, it was a weekly ritual, a sacred time to be glued to the TV screen with a bowl of cereal in hand. Picture this, you wake up early, still in your PJs, and tiptoe to the living room, eyes sparkling with anticipation. No, it's not a school day, it's Saturday, the day of the week when your favorite animated characters come to life. The animation extravaganza kicked off with classics like Rocky and Bullwinkle and Animaniacs, but let's rewind a bit. After bidding farewell to the Flintstones in primetime, Hanna-Barbera, the powerhouse of animation, shifted its focus to Saturday mornings. Magilla Gorilla, Adam Ant, Space Ghost, and the iconic Scooby-Doo took center stage, turning Saturday mornings into a cartoon carnival. The 70s brought in superhero sagas with Super Friends and the legendary Scooby-Doo, solving mysteries with a side of humor. As we grooved into the 80s, Saturday mornings started transforming. Enter shows like The Fonz and The Happy Days Gang, and it's Punky Brewster paving the way for a new era. Now brace yourself for the plot twist. The 90s brought a tech revolution that shook the very foundations of Saturday morning bliss. Personal computers, VCRs, DVDs, and video game consoles became the new playground for kids. While classics like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Animaniacs fought to keep the tradition alive, Cable networks like Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network emerged as alternative cartoon havens. Rolling into the 2000s, Saturday mornings were undergoing a makeover. Reruns from cable networks and imported cartoons took over, and the once vibrant tradition began to fade. The final blow came when live-action series meeting government-mandated educational standards replaced the beloved animated lineup. Litton's Weekend Adventure signaled the end of an era. September 27, 2014, marked the last gasp of the Saturday morning ritual when the CW Network aired the final episode of the Vortex animated lineup. The era of waking up to a cartoon extravaganza had officially come to a close. Number 9. Making Mixtapes for Friends Let's rewind a bit and remember that making someone a mixtape was the ultimate gesture of friendship, or maybe a subtle hint to that special someone. Yep, we're talking about those cherished cassette tapes, the unsung heroes of personal connections. 
In the age of streaming apps and algorithm-generated playlists, the art of crafting a mixtape has become a nostalgic memory. But for baby boomers, curating the perfect playlist on a cassette tape was an art form, a declaration of musical love. Picture this, you've got a crush, and you want them to notice you. What do you do? You carefully select songs, press record, and play simultaneously on your cassette player, hoping to capture the essence of your feelings in every beat and lyric. It's not just a mixtape, it's an audio letter, a compilation of melodies that speaks volumes without ushering a word. The thought and effort put into creating the perfect mixtape were unparalleled. It wasn't just about the songs, it was about the arrangement, the flow, and the personal touch. Each tape had a story to tell, from the first track to the last, weaving a musical journey that resonated with emotions. Music, after all, has the incredible power to transport us to specific moments, places, and people. Whether it's Mumford & Sons triggering memories of cobblestone streets in London, or M83 whisking you back to the high school prom, everyone has that one song that's a time-traveling ticket to the past. Therefore, as we say goodbye to cassette tapes and embrace the digital age, let's take a moment to appreciate the mixtape legacy. It's more than just a collection of songs, it's a piece of art, an expression of feelings, and a tangible reminder of the magic of music. Number 8. Photo Booths Let's take a snap and flashback to the days when instant gratification came in the form of photo booths, not just instant cameras. Baby boomers didn't just capture moments, they printed them out in strips, and oh, what a time it was. Back in the 50s, if you weren't striking a pose in a photo booth, were you even having a good time? These magical booths weren't tucked away in the corners of hipster hangouts. They were everywhere. Malls, bars, airports, and even Fred Astaire films. Picture this. You walk in, hop onto the adjustable stool, line up your face, and let the booth work its four-flash magic. Then came the eternal wait. Three or four minutes that felt like an eternity. Behind the scenes, a complicated contraption of springs, arms, and whirligigs, what photo booth enthusiasts fondly call tubs of chemistry, whizzed and word to create those strips of specially treated paper. Finally, your freshly captured moments were spat out, still wet, from the side slot. No negatives, no previews, no do-overs, just four chances to get it right. Yet despite the charm of these chemical wonders, their heyday faced a double whammy of technological advancements. First, the Polaroid camera arrived, offering immediate photo gratification with more flexibility. Then in the 90s, lightweight digital photo color booths stole the spotlight. Cheaper, faster, and easily transportable. They spelled the end for the old chemical booths. Slowly but surely, the once ubiquitous booths vanished, leaving behind memories in the form of faded photo strips. In today's era of digital filters and endless retakes, the chemical photo booth stands as a nostalgic relic. It's like a giant panda of the photo world, hefty, black, and white, and rarely spotted in the wild. Number 7. Playing board games without screens Remember the days when game nights meant gathering around a table with friends and family, not huddling over screens? Baby boomers sure do. In the 50s, 60s, and 70s, board games weren't just a pastime, they were a social event. Monopoly, Clue, Scrabble, these weren't just games. They were the ultimate tests of strategy and camaraderie. Think about the iconic board games of that era. Monopoly, Life, Candyland, Archeezy, Sorry, Clue, and Careers. The mere mention of these classics evokes a wave of nostalgia and familiarity. Each household had its favorites, whether it was the strategic battles of Risk and Battleship, or the whimsical themes of Mousetrap, Cooties, or Shoots and Ladders. What made these board games truly special was the togetherness they fostered. Whether you had one friend or a group, there was a game for every occasion. It wasn't about exercising your brain or claiming victory. It was about hanging loose with friends and having a good time. The joy of picking out game tokens before Monopoly even began, debating over being the top hat, battleship, boot, cannon, race car, dog, thimble, or iron was a ritual in itself. The game of life added a unique touch with its pink and blue cars as tokens. The real fun wasn't necessarily in the game, but in piling those tiny pink and blue children into the car. A playful echo of boomers as kids piling into the back of a pickup. Board games for baby boomers often transcended the rules, turning into a blast even when they played not as intended. Dominoes, for example, was a revelation for many boomer kids who discovered it had rules beyond stacking pieces to knock them down. Cooties, too, could be enjoyed by following the rules or assembling the cootie bugs in hilariously creative ways. The baby boomer era was also marked by games that brought out shouts, laughter, and crazy antics. Who could forget the suspenseful buzz and operation, or the fit of giggles induced by collapsing in Twister? And then there were the cheering matches while controlling robots in Rock'em Sock'em Robots. What made these board games enduring was the joy they brought and the memories they created. 
Fast forward to today, where screens dominate entertainment, and it's worth reflecting on the simplicity and richness of those moments spent rolling dice, moving game pieces, and sharing laughter. As we navigate a world saturated with digital distractions, perhaps it's time to dust off those board games, relive the camaraderie, and rediscover the magic of unplugged entertainment. Do you still have a favorite board game from the baby boom era that holds a special place in your heart? Share memories and let's celebrate the timeless joy of playing together. Number six, going to record stores to buy concert tickets. Then an eyelash of two billion dollars. Now let's travel down memory lane to an era when buying concert tickets involved more than just a few clicks. Inspired by a Bruce Springsteen bootleg on Sirius XM, let's delve into the pre-internet ticket sale landscape, a time when dedication meant camping outside record stores for a chance to see your favorite artists live. Back then, the primary hubs for concert tickets were not virtual platforms, but actual brick and mortar establishments, record stores to be precise. These stores, often beloved havens for music enthusiasts, were bestowed with the responsibility of being ticket purveyors. A section or two would be designated to showcase the upcoming concert tickets, and fans would flock to these stores to secure their entry to music extravaganzas. For major tours, a different approach was taken. The mail order lottery system. Imagine this. You'd send in a money order and a return envelope, and then anxiously wait by the mailbox, day after day, to find out if you made the cut. The anticipation, the uncertainty, it was all part of the process. Now picture the dedication of baby boomers camping outside these record stores. Rain or shine, they would patiently wait for their turn to snag tickets for iconic performances. Whether it was the Beatles, the Beach Boys, or Bruce Springsteen himself, the thrill of buying concert tickets was an experience etched in time. These were the days when technology hadn't streamlined the ticket buying process. It was a tangible communal affair, a shared excitement among fans, a physical connection to the music they loved. The act of buying tickets wasn't just a transaction, it was an event, a social gathering of like-minded individuals with a shared passion for music. Fast forward to today's era of online ticketing, where a few taps on your screen secure your spot at a concert. While the convenience is undeniable, there's something nostalgic and charming about the days when record stores served as the gateway to unforgettable live performances. So the next time you effortlessly purchase concert tickets online, take a moment to appreciate the journey of those baby boomers who once stood in line rain-soaked tickets in hand, eagerly awaiting the magic of a live musical experience. Number five, cassette Walkmans. Before iPods, MP3 players, and music streaming ruled the scene, there were these iconic gadgets called Walkmans, and baby boomers cherished them like modern-day audiophiles cherish their wireless earbuds. Imagine this, boomers would carry these portable music players around armed with a handful of cassette tapes, hoping the batteries wouldn't bail on them too soon. The Walkman wasn't just a device, it was a lifestyle, a symbol of on-the-go musical freedom. In the pre-digital age, reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders were the kings of the audio realm, and some boomers have clung on to these cherished relics. For them, threading the tape through the machine is an integral part of the listening experience. It's a practice that embodies a sense of nostalgia, transporting them back to a time when music was tangible, hands-on, and delightfully analog. The simple act of setting up the tape added an extra layer of connection to their favorite tunes, a ritual Gen Z might find curious in an era of instant streaming. Boomers came of age in the era of cassette tapes, a portable music format that predates CDs and digital downloads. To listen to a specific song, you had to manually rewind or fast-forward the tape until you reached the desired track. This wasn't just a task, it was an art, involving a keen sense of timing with a bit of estimation, as song titles weren't displayed. For boomers, this time-consuming process was a labor of love, a journey through the magnetic tape to uncover musical gems. Now contrast this with the seamless, instant access to millions of songs that Gen Z enjoys on modern streaming platforms. The idea of manually selecting songs on a cassette tape might seem outdated to them. Number four, scrapbooking. Let's talk about a form that used to be as common as Instagram selfies, scrapbooking. Before the days of scrolling through social media feeds, Baby boomers had a knack for preserving memories and physical scrapbooks filled with pictures, ticket stubs, and other mementos from special events and trips. It was like creating a personalized time capsule of their lives. Imagine this. You walk into a craft store in the early 2000s, and what do you see? Boy bands serenading you from the speakers, announcements for scrapbooking workshops, and aisles upon aisles of colorful supplies, puffy stickers, washi tape, binders, and patterned paper, all waiting to be transformed into a beautiful scrapbook. It was a booming industry, with scrapbooking estimated to be worth a whopping $3.5 billion by 2012. But as the years rolled on, interest in scrapbooking started to dwindle. 
A quick Google Trends search from 2004 to the present confirms the decline. Scrapbooking went from being a mainstay hobby to something associated with cliches like moms, grandmas, and Disney vacationers. So what happened? Well, our creative energy shifted, folks. We traded in our glue sticks for Instagram likes, our scrapbooks for digital photo albums. But let's not overlook the magic of scrapbooking. According to Megan Tazi, senior product manager at Brother, scrapbooking is more than just sticking picture onto paper. It's a creative outlet that draws on a variety of skills. It's about crafting something unique and meaningful, something that captures the essence of who we are and the memories we hold dear. And let's not forget, it's a fantastic way to unplug and de-stress in a world that's constantly buzzing with notifications and updates. Number three, film cameras. Consider this. Boomers, armed with film cameras, embarked on a unique journey of capturing memories. No instant previews, no endless digital storage, just the anticipation of awaiting the outcome of developed pictures. The tangible nature of film cameras provided an exciting experience that today's digital realm struggles to replicate. In the golden era of film photography, Boomers would purchase physical rolls of film before snapping away at moments that mattered. But the process didn't end there. After capturing those precious memories, the film had to be taken to a store for developing and printing. Waiting to see how the pictures turned out was a blend of surprise and anticipation, unlike the instant previews we've grown accustomed to today. Now let's take a trip down memory lane. Remember the excitement of carefully choosing the perfect 36 shots on a roll of film? Each exposure felt precious forcing photographers to snap each image just right. No previews, no retakes. It was a moment captured in time. Then came the meticulous process of taking the film to the photo lab, filling out the envelope with details and the agonizing wait for those developed prints. Oh, the wait. It felt like an eternity. Days would pass, and the trip back to collect that precious envelope of prints became a thrilling event. Tearing open the envelope and shuffling through the photos for the first time felt like unwrapping a gift. There were surprises, some blurry shots, some near perfect, and some happy accidents. Each photo told a story, each print held a memory. The physical, tangible nature of film photography made it stand out. Seeing your photos as physical prints made them feel more real than an image on a screen. The wait to develop film created a sense of longing and importance. Film was precious, and photographers wanted to make the most of each exposure. And let's not forget the social aspect. Sharing prints with friends and family was a communal experience. People traded prized prints, proudly displayed them at home, and carried them in wallets. Images felt precious when you only had one copy, a stark contrast to today's era of digital dissemination. There was something magical about the limitations of film photography. With only 24 to 36 shots per roll, every exposure was a carefully considered choice. The wait for results heightened the excitement, creating mystery and uncertainty. The physicality of prints made photos feel substantive and permanent. While the convenience of digital cameras is undeniable, the rituals and mystery of film photography have become nostalgic reminders of a magical time. The anticipation of waiting for prints, the delight in shuffling through the reveal, and the subsequent sharing and storytelling over precious prints, these are experiences lost in the digital age. For those who grew up with film, no smartphone camera can ever quite compare to that. The photos from those golden days remain among the most treasured, embodying a sense of nostalgia that even modern photo filters attempt to emulate. And don't even get us started on the iconic, chunky, mechanical SLRs with interchangeable lenses, viewfinders, manual dials, and buttons. Handling those sturdy camera bodies, hearing the click of the shutter, advancing film with a lever, it was a tactile experience that the sleek smartphones of today simply can't replicate. Number two, watching TV with antennas and rabbit ears. Getting back to the good old days when watching TV wasn't just about choosing from endless streaming options is a treat for us. Baby boomers had their trusty antennas and those finicky rabbit ears, the unsung heroes of broadcast television. You can picture boomers adjusting the rabbit ears atop their TVs to get decent reception. No Netflix, no cable subscriptions, just good old-fashioned broadcast television. Antennas perched on rooftops or jutting out from windows were the gateways to entertainment. And oh, those rabbit ears, the whimsical antenna that required a delicate touch to find that sweet spot for a clear picture. Unlike the on-demand streaming luxuries of today, Boomers had to adhere to the television schedule. Planning their evenings around specific broadcast times was the norm. Missing an episode meant relying on reruns or engaging in passionate discussions with friends who caught the latest installment. Gen Z, accustomed to binge-watching entire series whenever they please, might find it challenging to grasp the excitement and anticipation of gathering around the TV at a specific time for a shared viewing experience. Those old televisions are full of intricacies. They weren't 24-7 broadcasting wonders. They had downtime during the nighttime. 
Turning on the TV meant waiting for it to warm up, accompanied by the distinctive tonal sound. Test patterns like the iconic Indian head would grace the screen before and after programming, closing the day with the national anthem and a test pattern was the television sign-off ritual. Now imagine a time when changing TV channels required physical effort, walking up to the TV and using knobs. Remotes weren't commonplace yet, and baby boomers became adept at navigating the channels manually. A simpler time, perhaps, but one that required a bit more legwork. And here's a fun memory for you, tinfoil on the TV antenna. It might seem silly in the age of digital clarity, but back then, adding tinfoil to the antenna was a legitimate hack to boost the signal and get a clearer picture. Number 1. Typing with Typewriters Did you know that one of the most famous baby boomers in the world still uses a typewriter? Yep, Woody Allen. To this day, the famous director still writes all of his scripts on his typewriter. Beat to match their flying fingers in a contest for the New South Wales. He has done so since the beginning of his career. We wonder how many typos he gets away with because, as you know, there's no backspace option on a typewriter. Not so cool now, is it? Before computers and word processors, typewriters were the primary tools for writing and document preparation. Boomers had to manually press the keys, which mechanically struck an inked ribbon against the paper, leaving a typed impression. Errors were corrected using correction fluid or erasable ribbons. Gen Z, accustomed to the ease of typing on laptops and smartphones with autocorrect features, may find it challenging to grasp the patience and precision required to produce error-free documents on a typewriter. Now you know the top 20 things baby boomers took for granted that are pretty much gone these days. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and ring that notification bell so you never miss an update. Until next time, stay tuned.